Hello everyone, welcome to MESS e-learning channel. So in the last lecture we saw how to solve a concurrent force system and to replace the concurrent force system with a single resultant force and to locate it. In this lecture we are also going to solve another problem based on the same topic. So this is a square of 800 mm into 800 mm and we have our emerging forces from the point O which is offset from the actual center point. So if now here the A, A, D, C and B points are exactly located at the center of the square. So if we want to measure all the distances here, this would be 400 mm. If this is 400 and 300 is given, so this would be 100 mm. The whole distance is here is 800. So here from here we'll have the distance to be 400 mm, which is why and already we have been provided with a data of 250 mm from this point to the start. So if the half distance here is 400, so this would be 150, 150 mm and the distance from this point till this point it would be 550 mm. So now as we have all the distances that we need, let us find the angles. So I have already located the angles here. So if I take the first force that is of 20 Newton till A, I have the angle theta 1 with the x axis. Now any time that we have to assume angle theta, always assume it with respect to x axis. So here we have angle theta 1 with the x axis from the or offset origin here. So if we see, I have to find this angle and as we know that tan theta is always opposite upon adjacent. Correct? So here the adjacent side from this point to this point we have it as 500 and the opposite side from here if you see this point is 150 mm. So the tan theta 1 if I say it would be opposite upon adjacent. The opposite is 150 upon adjacent side is 500. So if I calculate this for theta 1, my theta 1 would be tan inverse 150 upon 500. That would be 16.7 degrees. Similarly, I have located my theta 2 for the force D with the x axis itself. So if I have to find tan theta 2, it would be now for theta 2, my triangle, if I have to see it is this triangle, this triangle. So if I have to see this is my 90 degree and I have to find theta. So according to tan theta, it is opposite upon adjacent to the angle. So for theta 2, the opposite side is this and the adjacent side is this. So our adjacent side, if you see, we have found out it to be 100 mm and the opposite side here is 550 mm. So if I have to find theta 2 now, it would be opposite that is 550 and adjacent that is 100. So for theta 2, it would be tan inverse 550 upon 100 that is 
79.7 degrees. Now let us move on to theta 3. So here I have marked theta 3 with the origin offset origin point and that is this triangle. So again according to theta we have our angle to be opposite this side and adjacent this side. So for tan theta 3 the opposite to the angle is this that is 150 mm and 150 mm and the adjacent side of the theta is here given that is 300 mm. So for theta 3 calculation theta 3 would be tan inverse 150 upon 300 that is 26.56 degrees theta 3. Next is I have to find theta 4. So tan theta 4 equals to. So I have my theta 4 here. So if I have to see the triangle is this. So opposite to the angle would be this side and adjacent to the angle is this side. So opposite side is this length that is 250 mm which is given and adjacent to the side is this that is 100 mm that we calculated. So it is opposite side is 250 and the adjacent side is 100. So theta 4 would be tan inverse 250 upon 100. So theta 4 would become 68.2 degrees. So now we have all the angles that we need here. So now as we have all the angles here, we can directly move on to resolving the forces that, the four forces that we have. So this is my theta 1, let me write the angles here itself. So theta 1 is 16.7 degrees, theta 2 is 79.7 degrees, theta 3 is 26.7 five six degrees and theta four is sixty eight point two degrees. So let us move on to resolving the forces. So resolving the force of twenty Newton I draw my resolved components here as the force is outwards the resolving components will also go outwards. So this component is now adjacent to theta so this would be the cos component and this is opposite to theta so it would be the sin component. So now as this is the cos component it would be force is 20 so 20 cos 16.7 degrees. This would be 20 sin 16.7 degrees. Our next force is this one that is add from O to D that is 25 Newtons. So if I have to resolve this, it would be like somewhat like this. So this force is now adjacent to the angle theta. So this would be the cos component. So it would be 25 cos 79.7 degrees. And this would be sine component 25 sine 79.7 degrees. Now the next force is the 10 Newton force towards the point C. So if I have to resolve this, it would be somewhat like this. So now this component is adjacent to the theta so it would be the cos component that is 10 cos 26.56 degrees 
and this would be the sine component as it is adjacent to angle theta. So, this would be 10 sine 26.56 degrees. Next is the force towards B. So, let us resolve this force also. So, this would be now here is the angle theta. So, this is the component that is adjacent to angle theta. So, this would be 15 cos 68.2 and this would be the sine component that is 15 sine 68.2. After we have resolved all the forces, the next step is to replace this concurrent force system into a single resultant force and to locate it. So, now as we know the step from the previous video, our first step is to find summation of f of x. So, for summation f of x, what do we do is, we calculate all the components, those who are in x direction and add it according to the sign convention. So, to just remind the sign convention here, I have the upward force to be pos uh, positive, the downward force to be negative, the forward force to be positive and the backward force to be negative. So, whichever force is going in the forward direction, we would annotate it as the positive force and whichever force in the backward direction would be a negative one. Accordingly, we write the summation of f of x. So, for here, from here, let us start from the first force that is A. So, this force of 20 Newton is going in the forward direction. So, it would be 20 cos 16.7 in the positive direction. Next is this force that is 25 cos 79.7 that is in the positive direction. So, plus it is 25 cos 79.7. Next is this force that is going in the backward direction, so negative. So, this is 10 cos 26.56, that is minus 10 cos 26.56, that is minus. Next is this force which is also in the forward direction, so again it would be plus 15 cos 68.2. If we calculate, we get our Fx to be 20.25 Newtons, that is positive. So, that if the value that we get is positive, our direction would be the positive direction for x forces. Now, the second step is to find F of y, that is we, d we have to do the summation of all the forces in the y direction according to the sign convention. So, for th the first force, this force 20 sine 16.7 is going upward, so that is the positive force. So, it would be 20 sine 16.7. Next is 25 sine which is going in the upward direction, so this is plus 25 sine 79.7 and the next force is this which is also going in the upward direction. So, this is po this will be positive. So, it will be plus 10 sine 26.56 and the last force that is 15 Newton which is this is force is going downward. So, it would be minus 15 sine 68.2. Now, if we calculate this, it comes out to be 20.89 Newtons positive. So, if your answer is positive, again the direction for the F y forces would be the positive direction that is upwards. Now, the third step would be 
to find the resultant. Now, as we know, the resultant formula is summation of f of x square plus summation of f of y square. That is summation of f of x is 20.25 square plus 20.89 square. So, if we calculate this, we get the answer to be 29.09 newtons. This is our resultant. Now, as we have we have a force which will replace all the forces in the system, we should find the angle about in which angle it will be placed. So, to find the angle, it would be theta r that is tan inverse of summation of f of y by summation of f of x that is tan inverse of f of y is 20.89 divided by 20.25. And the angle, if we calculate, comes out to be 45.89 degrees. As we have the value for resultant force, that is the force which will replace the whole force system and at which angle it will be placed, now let us lo actually locate it in a force system. So, let us say I have this as my force system. So, this square represents the same square. So, let us say I have my O here. O here. So, if you see I have my f of x and f of y positive. So, if I draw here my f of f of x and f of y in the positive direction, my resultant force would be somewhat like this. So, here also if I want to draw the resultant force here, I would draw it like this with this is r equals to 29.09 newtons and the angle would be theta r that is 45.89. So, this is how we f replace the whole force system into a resultant force and locate it in the same force system. In this lecture, we saw a concurrent force system and how we have replaced this system into a resultant force and we have located it. Hope you have understood. If you have any queries, you can just drop in your comments in the comment section below. Thank you.